Hey, mushroom nerds, it's Anna McHugh. I want to talk to you about this grotesquely chlorine smelling mushroom. It is called the pine cone amanita or Ravenel's amanita. And the scientific name is Amanita ravenelli. Before I talk about this sort of chlorine and pea smelling mushroom that is really ginormous and uh, very prevalent in the Southeastern US, I want to thank folks who have subscribed to the channel over the years and encourage those who haven't to please do subscribe if you're interested. Also, I have a website called mushroomanna.com and I have original artwork and t-shirts. I have this uh, Amanita circuit board uh, t-shirt that I personally love because I kind of enjoy computers, but I also have some botanical illustrations that I make when it is not mushroom season. All right, so back to this uh, glorious, stinky mushroom that I have here. First of all, the Amanita genus is sort of characterized by big cap and stem mushrooms, and uh, Amanita ravenelli is no different. It has very pyramidal, scaly warts on top, or they're uh, sort of scales more than warts. And a lot of Amanitas, they have material that's sort of like flaky or powdery and can be sloughed off. But as you can see, these are really almost part of the cap. And at the very base, you can see actually there's like a little pad of tissue that these pyramids are growing on. So that's like a very distinctive feature for this species. There are a few others that have that, but like the pyramidal warts and this really pungent chlorine plus a little something animal-esque is very, very distinctive uh, when you add it together with the scales. There is another species called Amanita ropalopus, which I just love to say that uh, also is very chlorine smelling, but uh, at least in my area in Raleigh, I see this uh, Amanita ravenelli a whole lot more. And Amanita ropalopus is one of those mushrooms that is a little more powdery on top as opposed to the sort of scaly pyramidal thing. All right, so let's talk about the base of the mushroom, Amanita mushrooms. It's really important to inspect and collect the entirety of the mushroom because the base is very important for IDs. As you can see, this is like kind of almost a carroty looking thing. Uh, it's not a true like root. It is just a very extended bulbous base. And the cool thing about these, and I love inspecting them, is you have these cracks and sort of uh, flaked off layers of tissue and that's very common you get a little bit of staining there this sort of a orangey reddish color but I just love the base of these mushrooms are kind of collectively called lepidellas uh, there's some taxonomy stuff that I'm not gonna go into but there's like a lot of these species that have these big chunky bulbous bases a lot of them smell foul oftentimes more like ham or meat as opposed to chlorine but many of them have these big sort of uh, you know, cracked bases. Scientifically, there is um, a lot of, not debate, but, you know, information that is yet to be sort of fully determined about where this lives taxonomically. However, an interesting thing about this is that Amanitas typically all grow as mycorrhizal species, meaning they grow in association with a tree or a plant. And in the case of this particular collection, uh, it was growing in a pine grove. And so presumably there's a, you know, a relationship between this fungus and this mycelium and those trees. However, there are uh, some Amanitas in this particular section of the genus that also have been decomposers sometime in the evolutionary past or even currently. And that's kind of interesting because again, Amanitas in general, you think of them as associating with something in the forest. And the idea that an Amanita would actually be going around decomposing organic material like leaves and wood is kind of uh, spooky and unusual for our understanding of the genus at large. Okay, so I also want to talk about a feature that is not very evident here, uh, but there is what's called a partial veil, and uh, I'll just break it open so that you can see. It's basically this very uh, sort of fine and felty material that covers the uh, gills, and the gills are whitish cream in color, and as this mushroom pops open, it can get just huge, like the size of a hubcap, and often these gills get uh, full of 
beetles. And so when you collect them, they just explode with beetles and it's very, very dramatic. But you also get uh, sort of attractive bits of this sort of uh, velvety or felty material stuck to the edge of the cap. Now the conditions have been very dry, so I'm delighted to find a mushroom of this size. Like a lot of other species are sleeping right now, they just can't stand the fact that we are in the 90s and haven't had rain for a week and a half. I will show you then a couple of uh, more dainty but mature specimens of Amanita ravenelli. So I just want to like caveat that under normal circumstances, like the mature specimen would be this size and then open up as opposed to, uh, you know, something that just really didn't get much of an opportunity. But again, you can see these very distinctive pyramidal uh, warty scales. You can also see that partial veil. It will leave a ring on the stem as, uh, you know, in addition to on the edges, but that ring oftentimes is really ephemeral and will fall right off. So you can see the beginnings of that here but again this material is kind of thick but it, it also sloughs off very easily okay my hands smell horrible but i want to talk about also one additional mushroom that i just love to find this is the golden reishi mushroom ganoderma curtisi and this is a native species in North Carolina and is called the golden reishi, as you can see, because it has this really, when it's mature, this very pleasing sort of uh, light golden color. Also, you have a sort of a classic varnished reddish uh, brown stem, and that is really distinctive for different reishi mushrooms, and that's the Ganoderma genus. And so again, Ganoderma curtisi, that is a native species, but you have other Ganoderma or reishi mushrooms that are, uh, or not. Um, and so like, you know, these sort of lighter colors is a very strong indication that you have one of these golden reishi on your hand, uh, on your hands. I also want to point out that reishi are polypore mushrooms, meaning you have a porous undersurface. And in this case, it's sort of white and pliable. Uh, if you're going to use these sort of medicinally or for food, I definitely recommend you, uh, look at other sources because I just am, too lazy to sort of like chop up and boil up mushrooms but I do want to uh you know highlight this mushroom because it is so common and so beautiful so this is what they look like when they're mature and again like nice and pliable and white underneath means that it's reasonably fresh this one is uh one that hasn't gotten it didn't get much of a chance to get mature but you can see also that the uh, undersurface is starting to get a little sort of scurfy and brownish and so that's a point at which you might find that it's a little squishy so if you're in, again if you're interested in using it you might uh start to you know really focus on making sure that they're nice and white as opposed to having sporulated and dried out and I specifically mentioned this also, here's a one that's kind of stumpy and a little bit uh, lewd looking, but sometimes you'll get little patches of things. It's like, is that mold? Is that just a little bit of sporulating uh, sort of fertile tissue? And for my money, I oftentimes find these mushrooms with uh, green aspergillus molds on them. And so for me, I'm like, I love to photograph them, this sort of contorted and convoluted varnish red brown is really attractive and these mushrooms they are decomposers you'll find them growing uh, at the base of oak trees but also at the base of pine um, so they're really again stinking everywhere and a lot of them are really cute like this uh, unfortunately he broke off before I could get like the whole stem but they oftentimes like look like a little Nessie or the uh, head of the Starship Enterprise so I just love to find them and again like cold uh, or excuse me dry conditions can be really difficult for our summer mushrooms in the southeastern U.S. because we really love our uh, thunderstorms but uh, by hook or by crook you're gonna see these big lepidella mushrooms or big uh, you know pine cone amanitas these things that are giant and sort of uh, creamy colored and smell bad of one kind or another and have these really, really cool turnip bases with splits in them. All right, that's all I have for you today. I really hope that we do get some rain. I hope you're having a great mushroom season and we'll talk again soon.